Hey guys, Martin here, and today I've got another Cinema 4D tutorial for you. Um, excuse me for not making a lot of tutorials over the past couple of weeks, but uh, yeah, let's just get started. And I'm gonna do a quick run on Metaballs. Uh, Metaballs is a pretty cool uh, little thing you can create without real flow in Cinema 4D. But I kind of try to uh, research it and kind of explain how uh, metaballs work to you guys but I saw this little line here might look familiar to people who've studied physics well I didn't and um, actually it's it's pretty pretty dang difficult but luckily for us cinema 4d does everything for us so let's set it to a 16 by 9 setting in the render settings And 25 frames a second, which is my preference. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, we're gonna go through this as fast as we can. This is a bit of an advanced tutorial, even though it's pretty easy. So if you're a novice, you can follow along. Just pause it a couple of times. Okay, we're gonna create uh, a new plane. And let's size it up to um, 40,000 by 40,000. Just make it nice and big and create a few spheres so let's drag this up 250 will do and let's size it down to about 15 and the segments to 35 okay now let's go into MoGraph and add a cloner object and the cloner object, well, we all know this, um, it clones the object. So let's drag this down to the middle. Sorry, guys, got a bit of a cold. Oops. Let's make that an exact number 250. Okay, and we're gonna up the count. Well, first, we're gonna set it to a grid array in the mode. And let's make it um, a 4x4x5. Four by four by and you got to be careful with this. If you put up the, put the number too high, um, let me just demonstrate this. I think it can handle this, but here's where it starts to get troublesome. Okay, um, you, you might end up lagging a lot. But let's just try and see what happens. Select the cloner object, go to MoGraph again, and select the random effector and click it. This randomizes the position, but we actually wanted to offset the size. So select parameter in the attributes of the random effector, turn off the position and turn on the scaling. And then select the uniform scale and up that number. And this, I mean, let's make this into a four. And up this a bit, um, that just a touch. So we got some room to play with. And Let's just see. I think around 1 is a really good number for this. And let's size it down just a touch. Okay. Now we've got our uh, basic metaball scene, even though it doesn't look it. So we're gonna go to the plane and add a MoGraph tag, a rigid body tag, select it, and do the same for the cloner object. Now let's play this. Select for a second. That's looking pretty bad, but we can work with this. Okay, so, excuse me. With this basic scene, we're going to turn this into a um, blob, basically. So, it's, it's pretty easy to do this. We're gonna go into the 
um, I don't know what this is thingy next to the hypernerves and select metaball and we need to get the clone object data into the metaball but as you can see it doesn't really do anything at all if I hit play it doesn't do anything the reason it's not doing anything is because we have to bake the data into the cloner object so the metaball knows what to do with it and this is a lot easier than it looks or sounds so right click the cloner object go to MoGraph tags and select MoGraph cache and all we need to do from this point on is to hit bake and it'll calculate some stuff for you and you can just drop it into metaball from here but we're gonna up the size of the polygons of decrease it rather than increase okay we got the editor subdivision here and let's just bring it down and oops and I just tried to warn you before I did it myself don't try to go below a value of 4 unless you got a really really fast uh, computer because it it can be laggy I set it to 4 and even that is kind of kind of much but it does look good though okay so we got a little blob here but it, it doesn't really look how we want it to look and I'm gonna down the polygon subdivision just for a second, I'm gonna set it to 8 so we're less laggy. What we're going to do is drag this out, select the cache, and clear it. Which means it's reset the data to zero. It doesn't have any calculations worked into the into here. Which means we can edit it and add some new stuff to it, like under the particle emitter uh, section add an attractor and the attractor is a pretty fun little thingy and we're gonna put the strength up to what would be a good number uh, 10,000 and the size of the speed limit to about 300 then we're gonna select the fall off, and um, I like to set it to uh, where are you? sphere. Um, infinite might be the best way to do this, but I really prefer sphere because you got the separate fall off, and yeah, I kind of prefer it. But infinite is a lot easier to to use. Not that this is really hard, but let's see. This needs to be a bit bigger. I'm just gonna set it like so. And as you can see, hopefully, yes, the spheres get attracted by the attractor. So what I'm gonna do here is just down the speed a bit, 200. And add another effector which is a rotation and rotation works best I also tried um, the friction and turbulence uh, effectors but I didn't really like them so let's set this up to about 35 try this out that looks that actually looks kinda cool let's just look Wait, let's add a camera real quick and set the field of view to 90 degrees and look through it. There we go. And I think for this to work, we need to make the um, attractor a bit more powerful. And I'm sorry if I made the tutorial a bit longer than I suspected, suspected but. Um, I'm just trying to sh demonstrate a few uses of the metaball or how you can control it at least. So, here we go. Okay, 20,000 with 200 speed limits works kind of good. So, let's 
select the cache again, or the cache, however you pronounce it, um, Dutch, and select bake. And it does that pretty quickly. So we can drop it into the meta ball. And the thing is, with a cloner object, you can't really scroll to the time uh, timeline forwards and back. But with this, you can, which is which is pretty cool. Just a little thing I miss when I'm using um, a normal uh, cloner object. So, and I think we should just get this out of here once more because it's it's not really that turb uh, as turbulent as I would want. So let's hit the. Uh, Rigid body tag, hit the collision, and I'm gonna set the bounce up to one and the collision noise up to one and the friction. I'll I'll add the friction as it is. Well the first little thing looked good, but as you can see, I just wanted to demonstrate this. You can't go backwards in a cloner object. So that kinda of sucks. And I'm gonna end this at about 150, just so we can see a bit more. I'm gonna set this to 1.2. This might be explosive, people. Maybe a 1.1. Yeah, this is a bit of a balancing a balancing act between. Um, High noise, high, high uh, explosions when stuff hits, sorry I just lost the word for a second. Or um, a dull looking animation, but I think this looks good. And I'm just gonna update the rotator just a touch to 45. Hmm, maybe 40. This is a bit of a trail and error. You're gonna spend the most time just uh, adjusting values so they'll fit. And I'm gonna change the fall off to a sphere as well. Where are you? Right here. So I'm gonna put the rotation here. Let's see what it does. Oh, yeah, that looks cool. That looks pretty cool. I think we can get something out of this. So, bake it again and drop it into the metal ball. And it's actually rendering pretty fast. I did not really expect this the first time. But if you put the subdivision up to 8, it's yeah, well it goes pretty pretty damn quick. Um with the subdivision set to 4, let's do that real quick, it might be a different story. And please try to keep the value over 1, even if you got a really fast computer. See that's a bit, bit slower, but the balls here look a lot better because at 8 you can get some artifacting from them bouncing around. But yeah, you can actually make this reactive to um, another object, and I think I'm going on a bit long, but I'll just drop this in really quick. Um, I've got, well, let's make a little text object. Now nah, let's just use a cube to make it this a bit more f fast. Let's scale it down. And let's just give it a rigid body tag. MoGraph, rigid body. Go to the dynamics and let's turn this off real quick. And I think if we should, it's been a while since I used this kind of stuff. Um, but let's just set a keyframe for the. Where are you? Fine. My bad. Um, for the coordinates right here, control click, even on a Mac, not command click, control click, and it sets a keyframe. Move forward to about 
You know what? Let's drag this one to about here. And let's set this 15 frames later. And just bash it on through. And if I did this right. Nope, I did not. Maybe I should enable the dynamics. Kabo huh? <laughs> I tried to uh, make a sound, but it didn't do nothing. Oh yeah, of course. Gotta clear the ca cache. And now it'll do stuff. Kabloodge. Okay, it just ran straight to there, so let's bake the data. Drop it into the meta ball. Oh yeah, and set the subdivisions just a touch lower. Because I mean this is just this is not grid anymore, this is just a web. Okay. So it's bubbling, 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 and then blam. Which is a really cool little thing. I recently used this in an intro. I'll upload it soon and maybe drop a link right you know. But that's how to create and use and even control metaballs. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial. I enjoy making these. So if you got a suggestion like, hey Martin, make a tutorial on how to make a car crush a building in Cinema 4D, I'll do that. Well, I don't think I'm that good, but I'll try to do that. I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, hopefully without a cold.